And I want to talk to you for a few minutes about the fact that I totally understand, I totally understand where we are and what God is using us to do and how God is using us to do it. And in the process, there is a word that came up in my spirit that I haven't heard for a while. And the word was called reformation. Haven't heard that word since the early 80s, reformation. The last time I heard the word reformation, that word was being used by the likeness of John Eckhart out of Chicago, Illinois and several others because at that time it was a moving of the Spirit of God from just the normal worship and the normal praise and the normal status of the church and it was taking the church into the prophetic age of God. In other words, making room for God to speak and say what it is he wanted to say in that hour at that particular time. And not hindering the presence of God. And not clamping and trying to control the presence of God. So reformation was um, a very powerful word. The very first time reformation was brought to my attention it was brought to my attention through my own studies. And it was when, back in the age where Martin Luther stamped his theses on the door of the Catholic Church, and he stamped his theses on the door of the Catholic Church because the Catholic Church at that time had declared that the only way that a person can talk to God, they had to talk to God through a person. And so through Martin Luther's studies, he found out that God was accessible to man and that man could come to God face to face. And they didn't need that. And so he stamped his theses on the door of the Catholic Church to declare reformation, which means reformation means to make it better, to redesign it, to, to re-implement some stuff. Uh, uh, reformation also means to, to, to make an adjustment so that it meets the times. And so in this hour of where we are, and I've been preaching about he's doing it in the spirit, we are once again embarking upon the spirit of reformation. And, and that's why I want you to understand something. I'm not shaken and I'm not moved by what God is using me to accomplish in this warehouse. Because I can remember when the church didn't have praise and worship teams. I can remember that. I can remember when they didn't have choirs. And, and the first person that began to implement the choirs, that person was called crazy. Now choirs is a common thing. The first person that implemented praise and worship teams, they was called crazy. Now praise, praise and worship teams is a common thing. What am I saying? If you're going to be a person that is led by the Spirit of God, you can't be afraid to be different than anybody else. Because if we're following everybody else, then how are we the prophetic voice? The prophetic voice is supposed to make an announcement to announce to the world what is next to come. Not what is what is next to come somebody said what is next to come somebody said that again what is next to come say it again like you mean it what is next to come have to make an announcement what is next to come that's why I don't get shaken about people talking about you ain't got no church no we ain't got no church you ain't got you ain't got no choir no we don't have no choir we don't miss no choir and we don't want a choir in church. Let, I can sing at home. I need to hear a word from God. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. Hmm. Somebody said we're here to make a difference. Somebody said we're here to make a difference. Not trying to be like everybody else because I believe that when you start talking about the people of God, too many times we have related church to the atmosphere of a building. And so when people are in the presence of God, when they are in the presence of God, they relate that presence to the church and to the choir and to the pastor. That's the reason why I have set this pulpit up like this, because I want you to know that God is in your house, that God is in your living room, that God is in your kitchen, that God is in your basement. 
basement. Somebody say, God is in my house. Somebody say, God is in my house. Somebody say, I'm standing in this building, but God is in my house. Oh, somebody give him a praise if you know that he's in your house. You've got to decree where God is. Because if God is locked up in your church building, then one day you're going to need God and the church is going to be locked up. If God is locked up in your preacher, one day you're going to need your preacher and you won't be able to find them. But you can always find God. Touch your neighbor and say, I can find God. Tell somebody, I can find God. Oh, Jesus, y'all sit down. I got it. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. That's why, that, that's, why, that's why we operate the way that we do. Because I want you to know that when you get in your car and you get a phone call and trouble hits you, I want you to be able to turn on your stereo. I want you to be able to pull your car over and command the presence of God to meet you on the side of the highway. I'm not here. spirit. The spirit is not to be harnessed up in a person or in a building. The spirit is liberty and where the spirit of the Lord is. Oh, y'all better sit down. I don't mean to get that riled up this soon. Somebody said the spirit of the Lord. Somebody said the spirit of the Lord. So when it's time to praise God, baby, this ain't the traditional church. We don't care if you run all over this church. We run outside and praise him and come back. Why? Because where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And I'm not out. Who am I talking to? Because guess what? Your neighbor don't know what you need to get your soul free. Don't nobody know what you've been struggling with all week. And I'm not going to come to the house of God and can't praise him. Understand that when you come in this building, you come in, in the presence of the Lord to be ignited. Y'all ain't saying nothing. You come in, in the presence of God so you can get what you need because, get, oh my God, if you can get yourself in the presence of the Lord, there's a lot of stuff you won't even have to rebuke because there's a lot of stuff the devil won't even bring to you. Who am I preaching to? Wait, 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 wait. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, 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 sit down, because I'm, 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 I'm going to show you something right quick, let me, let me, no, no, let me, let me show you this right quick, let me show you this, let me show you something, uh-huh, let me show you something right quick, Woo. yes, Lord Jesus, mm-hmm, yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am, mm-hmm, Lord, I thank you, Jesus. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's a purpose for the Spirit. What he says, the Spirit of the Lord, not, not, the, not, the, not the traditions of men, but the Spirit of the Lord. And see, I can talk like this because I've been, I was born and raised in the church. I was, I was born and raised in the church. I was Christian in the church. I was in the, I was in the junior choir. I was in purity class. I was in YPWW. I was in the sunshine band. Y'all ain't, y'all ain't hear me. I was an usher. I was a junior usher. I was, a, I was a senior usher. I was in the choir. I was in the young people choir. I was in the old people choir. I direct the choir. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I helped in the kitchen. Y'all, I, I'm, I'm not here. I, I sold gleaners. Yeah, so y'all don't know what gleaners are. They, uh, that's when they give you that little thing and you have to walk around and ask everybody to give you a quarter and fill it. Uh -huh. I said Easter speeches and I said I said Christmas speeches and yeah, come on somebody. I'm not hearing y'all. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. I've been in all night prayer and early morning prayer and day night prayer and seven o'clock in the afternoon prayer and I know 
know I know the system of the church but I also know that when the wind starts blowing on something else if you get stuck in tradition you go mix the next timing of God I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me because the church was only put in place to keep you in place but when you mature to another level in God you ready to hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying who am I talking to and if you in this building today I hear God saying that the spirit of God is upon you because it's time for the church to preach sit down for a second 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 touch your neighbors that preach the word oh y'all ain't gonna y'all ain't gonna get that because you think you gotta be ordained to be a preacher tell your neighbors that preach the word tell them that God is waiting for your life to preach the word he said it's time for you to preach get out of the prayer line and preach come out of counseling and pray. who am I talking to it's time for your life to preach the gospel wait, wait, wait. wait a minute nobody to holler. Say that right there. Because some of y'all saying, well, I ain't never got my license. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. Well, I ain't never been ordained. Oh, yes, you have. Because when the devil thought he killed you and you bounced back, that was your license. When the devil tried to knock your head off and you still kept going, that's your license. When you has ever been through anything tell them I got my license touch a neighbor and tell them touch a neighbor and tell them I got my license no turn around and tell three people I got my license no tell somebody else I got my license and then no, 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 tell them I ain't got time to give you my whole testimony but trust me you standing next to a miracle I ain't got time to tell you my whole story but trust me the way that I do that's the reason why I run that's the reason why I shout because the Lord has anointed me to preach the gospel somebody give him a shout right now hold on sit down sit down let me make this play I got 15 minutes Woo, sit down for a second Pull your neighbor down and y'all help me. Help me now. Pull your neighbor down and help. Pull your neighbor down and help the pastor. Jesus have mercy. Jesus have mercy. Jesus have mercy. Jesus, have mercy. Woo! I once was sick and now I'm healed. Now I got the power to heal the sick. Was crazy. Now that I'm saying, now I got the power to be a mind regulator. I once was depressed, but now I got joy. I can release joy. Somebody can go to shout right now. Turn around. Sit down. Turn around. Turn around and ask your neighbor, is there? This is the title to today's message that he doing it in the spirit. Turn around and ask your neighbor, is there a preacher in the house? Is there a preacher in the house? Is there a preacher in the house where you live? Is there a preacher at your address? Is there anybody that's got the power from the spirit of God to get up at three o'clock in the morning? Lay hands on your children. Lay hands on your husband. Speak Speak well into your house. Is there a preacher in the house? 
hearing y'all. I'm not hearing y'all. I'm not hearing nobody preach to me. No, 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 no. Touch your neighbor and tell them prophet is by him. Is the pastor of this house. But I'm the pastor of my house. sit down and help me I said I wasn't gonna preach like this today y'all gotta sit down and help me wait a minute wait a minute wait 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 y'all 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 got to sit down while I explain to you what is he talking about? Whoa, sit down for a second. What is he talking about when he said that the spirit of the Lord is upon me? What is he saying when he said the spirit of the Lord is upon me? You can always tell when the spirit of the Lord is upon you. Because even when you're sitting next to people that try to bind you up, you find yourself jumping up anyhow because you can't even hold your seat. Because the spirit of the Lord says that he has anointed me to give liberty. The Amplified Bible says spiritual and physical liberty to the oppressed and the captive. So that's right. Sit down next to me this Sunday. situation yeah come on tell them say you got to get up out of your situation and tell them when I go home after this service I ain't gonna stop praying for you because it's too late you shouldn't have never sat beside me you shouldn't have sat behind me you shouldn't have sat in front of me you just got trapped up in the spirit realm Watch this, sit down. Let me, let me, let me say this as I close. Lord Jesus, as I close, sit down, sit down. Come on, y'all, help me for real. Help me for real. Tell somebody and say, don't play with the warehouse. No, no, no. Tell them, if you don't want to be free for real, this ain't the place to be. If you waiting for a pity party, this ain't none of your church. I'm not in there talking about me because in this building, everybody in here got a reason. If they want to be depressed, to stay depressed. But we have decided to reach down in the spirit of our mind and preach the gospel to ourselves. Who am I preaching to? Let me make this clear. Sit down for a second. Everybody got to sit down while I say this. Everybody got to sit down. Everybody sit down while I'm saying this. While I'm saying this. He said. See, y'all don't even know that right now, while you in this atmosphere, what you don't know is why you in this atmosphere and the presence of God done hit this building like this. What you don't know is why you in this atmosphere, you can praise God in such a way that you will ignite angels to get on the run. I'm here to tell somebody that you got the power to dispatch an angel to go to your now, correct everything, solve everything, wipe out everything, heal everything, revive everything, restore everything. Who am I preaching to? You better start some if you believe it. Yes, 
Everybody sit down, let me. This is the part I had to say. I had to say this part, sit down for a second. And I'm closed, I got five minutes. Sit down for a second. He said, the, I, got a, I got a message this morning. Let me give you this revelation. I got a message this morning. And uh, he said that the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Spirit means non-physical. Spirit means non-physical. What is going on, on me and in me is non-physical. What is moving on my behalf while I'm sitting in this building, I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. See, there's a signal that has to be sent. And, and, and so, when Jesus couldn't be everywhere at all times, he died so that he can release the Spirit of God to come. So the anointing is birthed after there has been a death. So if the devil ain't never tried to kill you, you ain't anointed yet. Oh, no, 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 you just feel the Spirit. That's why some of y'all can give him a look praise. Because the devil ain't never tried to take you out. Who am I talking to? That's why some of y'all in here praise him if you feel like it. Because you ain't never had no gun put to your head. And they pulled the trigger and it wouldn't go off. You ain't never had your car to drop 50 feet. And you walk out of it alive. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. You ain't never had yourself in a position that you stood between life and death. Because if you have, then you know that the only reason why you're here is resurrection power. in the vision this morning. He said the spirit is non-physical. Well, what are you saying, God? He said, I deliberately made the spirit realm non-physical because when I swoop down in my power and I'm headed into the earth realm to do a miracle and I find somebody that look like they want to praise me and when my spirit get to them and I want to do the work and they sit back down he said I left it a spirit so I can switch it up and go find somebody that want to deliver it he said I made it a spirit so I can move in and out as I please and right now I hear God saying I'm ready to move in somebody's family he said you better start shouting up this revelation I'm closing with this huh. I got three minutes they done gave me my three minute card sit down for a second cuz this getting ready to bless you cuz the only people that I want to get up out of your seat is people that show up believe what God is getting ready to reveal right now everybody sit down let me tell you this I got a message from a friend of mine in California and they said, they said, I woke up this morning and I went in prayer. And they said, I usually wake up to see the sunrise. And they said, but this morning, whew, I couldn't hardly sleep last night because I kept feeling his presence. They said, but this morning, something unusual happened. They said, I looked up and the sun rose in the east, but it was in the far east where you all were. They said, at the time that I woke up last 
week. It was rising close to me. They said, but this morning, I got up and I saw the sun. I saw it rise in the far east where you all are in Atlanta. She said, I'm going to tell you something. The sun is shining on y'all right now. And I want you to catch this in the spirit. Now, wait a minute. That didn't make no sense. Because when I put my robe on and I came to the window, it was cloudy outside. I didn't see no sun. But the reason why I praise about because I got a message from somebody that saw it. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. I'm not hearing you. You may be in this building saying, but I don't see my deliverance. But I don't see my breakthrough. You may be listening to my tape. And you might be saying, but I don't see my breakthrough. And I don't feel my deliverance. Well, I better tell you, you better shout up. Music. 
You gotta, you gotta use your intelligence. First of all, if you got close enough to the sun without protection, you would die. You would die at just being within a hundred thousand miles radius from the sun without protection. You would die. I ain't getting nobody to agree with me right there. Being a hundred thousand miles in radius from the sun, you would die. Let's let that settle in your spirit. You would die. <laughs> you would die. However, however, at a distance, the sun is working for you in the molecules, in the atoms, in the nuclear system. The fact that the sun came up is what causes the human being to adapt to what the sun is giving off. And you ain't even, matter of fact, you didn't even see it when it came up. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me because I want to help you with something. If the sun fell out of the sky today, everybody would die. Y'all don't say nothing. So the fact that the sun ain't even close to you. See, that's helping somebody that said, well, I don't feel like praising God because I don't feel the S-O-N. Uh, I don't feel, I don't feel the S-O-N. I'm just being told the S-U-N has arisen. But see, you got to have common sense to understand that, 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 wait, 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 wait. If they said the sun rose in the east, then that means, guess what? I ain't got to see it. All I got to do is hear a word from God. All I got to know is that God said he's there. I'm hearing y'all say what is with that. God is there. He's right here right now. And that's what he's waiting on. He's trying to find a people that ain't got to see nothing. But the minute they hear a sound, the minute they hear a sound of freedom, the minute somebody speaks something to them, they respond on the spoken word. Is anybody in here today that's just For a second, I got I'm closing. I'm closing. The spirit of the Lord. Be seated, be seated, be seated, be seated, be seated, be seated. Thank you, Jesus. There's a liberty in this place. There's a freedom in this place. In the atmosphere of this building, God is making whole. He said, is there a preacher in the house? Is there a preacher in the house? I said, see, the reason why I'm asking because, because when we were children and we would come to our parents and say, oh, I got so-and-so, so-and-so, and I got this been broke out on me, and my mama would look at our arm, and uh, the first thing she would do is run and get the blessed oil and start praying and say, the devil is a lie. When the refrigerator would break down, my mama would run and get the blessed oil 
and slap it on the refrigerator and start hitting the side of the refrigerator and the refrigerator would come back on. I remember when the washing machine was broke. My mama went downstairs and took some blessed oil and poured it down inside the washing machine and turned it on. And three hours later, we went back downstairs and the washing machine was washing by itself. I said, is there a preacher in the house? Oh, I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me because I don't know about y'all, but God is, 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 is heading the church back to the original state where you're going to be in your house and, and somebody going to say, I don't feel good. And you're going to slap some oil on them and say, be healed in the name of Jesus. I said, is there a preacher in the house? When somebody come to your house and say, I got a problem and I feel like killing myself, the prophetic word going to come up out of your mouth. And before you know it, the power going to knock them out in your living room. And before I'm not hearing you. Take authority. Whew. Take. As for me and my house. Why can't I get nobody to say nothing? Why can't I get nobody? As for me. a change. I feel a change. I feel a change in the house. If I'm talking about your house, you better stop praising God. I said, I feel a change in the house. I said, if I'm talking about you, you better stop praising God. Because I'm telling you, in the next eight days, everybody that come in your house, they going to say something. They know it feel different in here. that in this house who am I preaching to right now if you know I'm preaching to you who am I preaching to he said let the glory fill your house he said let the glory fill your house he said when everybody leave and they go to the grocery store even if you get rid of ghosts away with your kids send everybody to the car and run back in the house right quick and just say God let your glory be revealed
to right now I said who am I talking to if I'm talking to you I want you to shout it I said who am I talking to who am I talking to y'all like like y'all like like y'all don't know what I'm talking about y'all like like y'all don't know what I'm talking about I'm talking about when you in your house by yourself Say, God, let your glory be revealed. God, my kids is acting a fool, but when they come in today and sit down to dinner, God, sit down in the chair. Let them sit on your presence. God, I speak deliverance. When they come and grab the refrigerator, God, let something break out in them. God, anoint the kitchen table. God, anoint every chair. Move to your living room. God, I bless you. Because this is where Johnny lay to watch TV. When he lay down, Get on top of him. God, get in the carpet. Get in the cocktail table. When they reach to turn the light on, let your spirit light up their spirit. God, I go to the bedroom. Every foul thing, every inordinate thing, everything that comes to hinder, snatch my baby's mind. When they lay down, break it, break it, break it. Somebody give God a shout right now. change in the house I feel a change in the house when they run in the house from school hey mama What's that I just felt on you? Where you been? Who you been talking to today? Because I sense a spirit on you. I hear the Lord said it's time for the fear of God to come back on the believers. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. It's time for your kids to walk in the house and start tiptoeing. Because you've been in there praying and they don't know nothing about you been praying. They just know they whispering to the point that I done been there. We come home from school and we all whispering. And we ask ourselves, why are we whispering? And my older sister say, because it feels like prayer in here. And we easing around and tiptoeing because the glory is so thick in our house that you dare not speak. We start going in our room and taking down posters and pulling out junk that we ain't got no business having. Who am I talking to? I said it's time to bring the glory back in your house. I don't care if you live in there with your roommate. When she leave, you just start walking and praying and say, God, deliver her a move. Who am I talking to? Because it's time to go after your life. It's time not to be comfortable. It's time to go after your life. It's time to get God in your house. You can't take the church building home. You can't take your pastor home. But God want to know, is there a preacher in the house? Is there a preacher in the house? What happens? We use this terminology. Mama, Daddy, Auntie, Gwen, Vicky, while you was gone, Earl came back. And we got into it. Mama, while you was gone, Cookie and Bookie got into it. Husband, baby, while you was gone, your sister came over here with some mess. God said, it's time to reverse that. That when they leave and come back and tell them why you was gone. God dropped in this kitchen. Uh-huh. While you was gone, the Holy Ghost jumped your bedroom. And I'm going to tell you, you ain't going to have no peace until you turn your life over to Jesus. Why you was gone, God took residence in here. Why you was gone, he took possession of
Is there anybody in this building that can say, Prophet, is this was my word today? You go to work with the devil. You go to the grocery store with devils. You got to be in the streets around devils. And then you got to come home with devils. That one you can control. Because you need to wait. Your prime time. Prime time is when everybody leave. <laughs> and you step back in there and say, okay, God, what you want to do in here? Oh, God, use my mouth because the spirit of life and death is in my mouth. God, I speak salvation. I speak deliverance. I speak it in Jesus' name. I break every perverse spirit. I break it in the name of Jesus. I break every sex devil in the name of Jesus. I break every spirit of insanity. I break a dumb spirit right now. I break every spirit of rebellion. I rebuke witchcraft off of my kids. I rebuke it in Jesus' name. And we go into the grocery store. Hey. <laughs> Touch three people and said, That's your moment. That's your moment. here right quick. Four of y'all right there. Cookie, you, Chris Pina, four of y'all. Run here right quick. This your family. Y'all getting ready to go to the mall because everybody need tennis shoes. All right, we going. Come on. Oop, you know what? Y'all y'all going and get in the car. Get in the car. Go on, get in the car now. I'm coming. I'm coming. Don't, don't start the car. Just get in the car. God, in the name of Jesus. God, I feel a spirit. I feel a power spirit in Jesus' name. God, I'm asking you to bind up the spirit. I'm asking you to cast out rebellion. I rebuke witchcraft right now. I spill up the spirit of rebellion. I feel it, God, an insane spirit. I bind it in joy. I bind it in joy. I call her heart back to God. I call her attention to the Holy Ghost. I speak it in Jesus' name. He will preach. She will prophesy. She will sing for your glory. God, turn it around. Switch this spirit over in Jesus' mighty name. All right, mama. They don't know nothing. But two weeks later, Mama, the Lord told me. Three weeks later, they cry in the middle of the night. I had a dream, and I dream I was going to hell. Uh -uh, two weeks later, two weeks later, Mama, I gotta tell you something. I was smoking, but I ain't smoking no more. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me because God said when you recognize that you are the preacher of your house, when you recognize that you are the evangelist of your. Because you're trying to make them be present while you get them free. You ain't got to be present. Go on to the baseball game. Because I'm going to hold your bedroom down while you go. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. Who am I talking to? You ain't got to be present. Go on to your girlfriend's house. Because I'm going to be in your bedroom while you go. Oh, go ahead. No, y'all ain't got to be here because I'm going to spend the night in the den. I'm going to wait till y'all go to sleep. And I'm going to get up with my oil. And I'm going to come down in the den. I'm going to anoint the TV. I'm going to anoint the couch. Now I'm going to see what's going to happen. The next time y'all down here trying to watch a nasty movie. Because I'm the pastor of this house. Who am I? I don't know.
know where that came from. I don't know where that word came from. I don't know where that word came from. That becomes, that becomes, mama, can I go to the park? And that becomes you becoming the pastor by saying, you can go to the park, but that's the only place my prayer is going to cover you. You leave that park and you just stepped into the hands of the devil. I'm not hearing y'all talk. See, y'all, y'all going to stop y'all kids from doing whatever they want to do. Uh-huh. Mama, can I go to cookie house? My prayers is going with you to cookie house. Leave and go anywhere else. And you just step yourself in the hands of the devil. I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me. I said, is there a pastor in the house? Is there anybody that feel like saving their family? No, ma'am, you need to put your bull step up and stop all that crying and being pitiful. And take a puppet over the atmosphere. Because it ain't nothing but a spirit. You don't flat, you don't fight against flesh and blood. But against principality and powers. Who am I talking to? Stop arguing with your kids. Don't argue with the devil. Find him up. Because you are the best. The new rule. The new rule, if you listen, is I'm going to tell God first. I'm going to tell you first. And then you disobey me. I'm going to tell God next. I'm going to tell you to stop. I'm going to tell you to bring your spirit under. And if you don't obey me, then I'm going to tell God. And I promise you, God can whip you a whole lot harder than I can. Is there a pastor in the house? Today, today the Lord said, when you leave out of this building, go today before 12 o'clock midnight and get a bottle of oil. The Spirit of the Lord said, I'm going to anoint it because the spirit where I'm for today is on what I'm saying. He said, every person in this building that believes the word of the Lord today, go get a bottle of blessed oil. When you hold it in your hand because you've been in this service, God's going to bless the bottle. And he said, for the next 30 days, start an anointing service on your furniture, on your doorknobs. Your kids gonna be going out the door and can't twist it because it's gonna be slick. And they're gonna what's this on the knob? Oh, this number the little oh. Now, uh, don't even tell them it's blessed though. They're gonna be checking out, mama, something on the something on the bathroom door. Where all this grease? They're gonna wake up shining. Tell me, what, what, what all this grease do to my Because while you were asleep, I stood over your bed and rubbed oil on the bottom of your feet. I rubbed it on your hands. I rubbed it on your forehead. I bind the hands of the enemy because I'm the pastor of the house. My God. I wish I had somebody to believe this. He said, go get your oil and anoint everything in your house. And every time you sense it, if you had to work and God said, when you get home, anoint the bathroom. Go in the bathroom and start anointing. If you get home the next day and God said, get in the living room, just go in the living room. Who am I talking to? Because a secret to it is, you get ready to dispatch revival in your house. 